Let's get to Bob Bassani, see what's happening on the floor. Morning, Bob. And the most important thing is uh, no circuit breakers this morning. The slightly different tone, a, a, a little concern at the open, but we never hit those circuit breakers. Just put that in, remember, 7%. Didn't get near there right now. It's sort of down about, uh, as you saw, roughly 6%. That level one halt, 7%. Not there yet, so let's just move on and show you. The main thing that everyone was concerned about this morning, everything was down. So if you look, for example, uh, at uh, corporate bonds, put up the next uh, screen, you look at corporate bonds, this is LQD, we're down, corporate bonds down. S&P 500, the, the Spider ETF, that's down. Crude oil's down, gold's down. Everything down here, that implies, of course, people are simply moving to the sidelines and, and gathering cash. That's an issue down here. Sectors, uh, we're continuing to see some small bifurcation, as we used to say. Consumer staples still down, notably healthcare down. Utilities eating down even more. Industrials down seven and a half percent. So yes, a little bit of different differentiation, but let's not get too crazy about it. The overall market is still down two or three percent differences between the highest and the lowest ones. Boeing here, of course, big concern over in the Dow here. Broke 100 briefly just a few moments ago. But remember, Boeing's talking about a, a seeking access to 60 billion dollars in public and private liquidity for the aerospace industry. Boeing's market cap is now below 60 billion dollars. It's probably at this level, maybe 57, 58 billion dollars, somewhere around there. Rather remarkable uh, just to see what Boeing's been doing recently. S&P 500, just want to remind everybody uh, from our cash in a little while ago, for several weeks ago, 2351. That was the old December 24th, 2018 low that we've seen. We have not touched that, uh, but we have gotten awfully close several times. There's not much technicals out there to look for, but that's sort of the main one that everybody uh, is looking at. Curiously, a lot of analysts are still in the upgrade and downgrade business. You think, would this really matter? But no, they're still out there. Walmart got an upgrade today, a gather one from uh, Credit Suisse. They may grow their market share. Kroger got an upgrade at Telsey Group, talking about a surge in demand for food. O'Reilly Auto upgraded over at Goldman Sachs. Counter cyclicality of auto parts business. Ralph Lauren also got an upgrade at B of A. Uh, downside largely priced in Duncan Brands uh, upgraded over at BTIG. There also are some downgrades, and pay attention to that. Of course, we saw the big, uh, some good strength here in Coca-Cola recently. Monster Beverage downgraded over at Morgan Stanley. Mandated closures for businesses and restrictions on public gatherings, a problem for these. So the debate now is very simple. What are we still in? Is this a U-shape? Is it an L-shape recovery? Most people are not big on using V-shaped anymore. Uh, the L-shape seems to be very much in control of the narrative right now here. And of course, there's some question about whether or not we're going to need bigger bazookas out there, to, to put it mildly. The L-shape recovery, you know, if, if critical economic relationships that may dis be disrupted longer term, particularly in small business. Jeffrey is a very good example here, uh, quoting, of course, the, what we saw in Jaws. We're going to need a bigger boat. So a lot of questions about even with the current programs, whether we're going to see additional ones on top of them. But I think it's very encouraging here, Carl, the somewhat quieter response of the market, not just not at the moment, not hitting the circuit breakers. Uh, markets did open a little more orderly as well. There were much, much uh, less uh, delays in some of the openings uh, here. So up and running a lot quicker here. Guys, back to you. Bob. Yeah, hey, Bob, it's David. Um, you know, you Hi, spend your days a lot of times obviously talking to trading desks. Um, what are you hearing in terms of a, a situation we've never encountered before, where we've got people either working from remote locations or many working from home? Yeah. What are you hearing in terms of the ability to trade, settlements, um, fails and things of that nature. Is this going okay or is it encountering some issues? Well, you know, the, the thing I've been watching carefully is the market plumbing, what we call market structure. Is everyone able to get the trades through? Uh, are we able to get the settlement? And the system has worked remarkably well. Now, there have been some, some flashpoints, but remember, they made some big changes several years ago in response to the flash crash. For example, uh, they upgraded, the, the SEC required systems upgrades regular testing. The system overall is more robust than it was 10 years ago. And I think uh, that is showing through. There was a, a regulation called Reg SCI that the SEC implemented with all the exchanges. You have to upgrade. You have to regularly stress test the systems. Uh, this happened in the last 10 years, and I think it's made a difference. There has been some modest dislocations in some of uh, the ETFs, for example, some of the corporate bond and, and bond ETFs recently. There's been some differences in the net asset value uh, at the, uh, towards what people are willing to pay and what are being priced. 
Uh, but that's simply because the ETF business allows people to trade without tra the, trading the underlying securities. So, for example, the SPY, the Spider, this is the largest ETF. 90% of the time, the SPY trades without any of the underlying securities, the S&P 500, actually changing hands underneath that. So individuals can trade without actually trading the underlines. You could do that in the bond market as well. Sometimes you get some mispricings in the last few days, but that tends to narrow as things kind of calm down. So in terms of the trading desk, yeah, people are worried about the fact that a lot of people aren't in. And down here at the NYSE as well, this has been an issue and hotly discussed in the last few days. But in terms of the market structure, most of it seems to still be working pretty well.